Whoa, 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 whoa. This is not a Wise Words episode. Well, let me explain. So last week, I did hint at there not being a Wise Words today. If you read my description on the last battle I put up, I decided to actually hold off on that particular Wise Words episode. I don't think the topic I was going to talk about is really appropriate for me to discuss because honestly, I haven't been entrenched in the Pokemon community like that lately. I know the topic was an issue in the past, however, but it doesn't seem like it's as much of an issue now, so I'll save it for a later time when it's more appropriate. It's just going to depend on how the Pokemon community grows. Uh, but anywho, what's up guys? Molly is back with another episode of Diamonds Are Forever. For those new, or for those that have been living under a rock, I, I wouldn't blame you. This is a series where I upload past DPPOU matches that I had back in 2013 and 2014 that I still have saved in the archives. At least the ones that were pretty good. So today we are up against Tomato Sauce. And I decided that since I've only got a pair of battles left with my Hail team, I wanted to go ahead and get those uploaded first, but the Burnstall team will return. No more talk, let's get into it. I lead off with Fortress and my opponent leads with Tyranitar. Lead Tyranitars are unpredictable creatures, so I immediately switch to Nidoqueen to avoid a possible Flamethrower or Fire Blast and Soft switches to Scizor. Huh. Since Nidoqueen can also potentially do something to Scizor, Soft switches to reveal Rotom H and I take the chance to set up Stealth Rock. Seeing the leftovers recovery gets me thinking this could be a set that carries will o -Lisp. Not wanting Nidoqueen to get burned, I switch to Raikou and Soft shows the substitute here, so now I'm thinking this is a sub pain split set because those sets were extremely popular back in 2013. Because of that, I stay in the calm mind so Weather Ball will be enough to break the sub, expecting the coverage moves to be Shadow Ball and Thunderbolt. But Sauce is carrying Discharge to my surprise, actually. But uh, thankfully, Raikou does not catch the Paralysis here. Now, I can't risk my main sweeper getting paralyzed, so I'm going to switch out and actually reveal Flygon, uh, expecting another Discharge coming from this, this Rotom. And that is indeed the play. So, Flygon can't really do much to this Rotom this early in the game. Outrage is the only move that would break the sub, but Sauce has already shown Scizor, so that's a no-go. I decide to U-turn out to possibly see what else Rotom is packing, and I go back to Fortress, and I almost get burned literally, as Rotom does turn out to carry Will-O-Wisp. So I've seen three out of four moves on this Rotom and deduced that the last move was Shadow Ball, and that there's no way Sauce is carrying overheat on this Rotom, so I felt safe to go to Aboma Snow. And I get blown up and lose the weather war, consequently. It looks really bad on my end because you could argue that Sauce just went for the obvious move and I could have played around it, but a Rotom with no Shadow Ball was unheard of back then. So I'm a little pissed off, but I go back to Needle Queen because I don't even want Raikou taking a burn with Rotom still behind a sub and a burn Needle Queen isn't that bad. I do catch a will of wisp as expected and set up Toxic Spice in case one of the three unrevealed mons would not appreciate poison. Now here we go, get into a bit of a back and forth. I decide to just spam Fire Blast as I know if Rotom stays in, all Sauce can do is spam Overheat and I just want to wear this thing out since this set literally exists to just annoy people. I do manage to break this up, and we both end up just staying in here, which tells me Sauce didn't want to switch anything else into this Needle Queen, and you guys will see why later on. But we just spam fire moves until we get too low to continue, and funnily enough, Sauce decides to just sub down at 26%, but knowing that Needle Queen would go down to hell regardless, I'm gonna go for the second layer of Toxic Spikes, and I managed to sneak it in thanks to the sub, and it's a double down. I reveal Gyarados, and Sauce turns out to also have a Fortress. I don't have a Spin Blocker on this team, so I know I'm about to lose the Hazard War as well, but I plan to use Fori as Setup Fodder, so I go for Dragon Dance, as unsur and unsurprisingly my opponent has Rapid Spin. Here I'm going to go for Dragon Dance again because a plus 2 Gyarados basically sweeps any team in DPPOU, and no one at the time ran Explosion on Fortress, except for me. 
right? Oh. I get blown up on again. And it's another double down after the hail. So, I bring Fortress back in on the free switch, and Sauce is going to go with Tyranitar. Now, here I'm actually going to double switch back to Flygon, again testing the waters on this Tyranitar, but Sauce is going to switch out as well. So, this confirms that Titar likely doesn't have fire covers to deal with Fori, and Scizor comes back in. And here's where I make the biggest misplay of the game. I go back to Fortress, thinking this Scizor is some kind of choice variant, and Fori can set up on it, but Sauce shows the Swords Dance here, and it's when I realize I'm in big trouble. I should have picked up on the fact that this was an SD set from the very first turn, when Sauce switched Scizor into a Fortress. Which never happens unless it's a Setup Sweeper, but I didn't see it at all. So now I have to play Damage Control, and there's no way I can set up Spikes now. I'm forced to spam Earthquake and hope this thing is a more all-out offensive Life Orb version, because the bulky Roos version is honestly even scarier in this situation. Thankfully it is, and it turns out Sauce is not carrying Roost at all, as Bug Bite and Brick Break get revealed and no Scizor leaves home without Bullet Punch. So I bring Raikou in after 4 he goes down, and even a plus 4 Bullet Punch doesn't manage a KO without a crit. And I get the Thunderbolt off for the KO. Uh, Jirachi gets revealed on the free switch here, and it's at this point I decide to just sacrifice Raikou, just so I can scout the Jirachi set. My plan is to put all my hopes and dreams on Flygon, as I'd literally have to switch Raikou into a non-damaging move for it to survive coming in, and that won't happen with me being this far behind. Body Slam gets shown, uh, which usually means Jirachi's the wish support set that's physically bulky, and I just missed the KO with Earthquake on Flygon, and I get paralyzed, which this would basically mean game, as there's really isn't anything out there in DPPLU that Flygon can still outspeed and KO with Earthquake. Uh, this meant that Jirachi got off more damage before I could knock it out. Thankfully, I didn't get fully paralyzed. Tyranitar comes in, and I really hate when people do this. Sauce decides just to spam Stealth Rock, knowing he could go for any other move to deal with Flygon. Even if you're trying to do that to make the score closer by showing pity, you just rub salt in the moon. Because this also confirms that the last Mon could easily take care of Flygon, and it turns out to be Swampert. And... That was the reason why Sauce didn't switch in anything else on Nidoqueen earlier, uh, since Swampert didn't, does not appreciate poison at all, otherwise it could deal with Nidoqueen. And Flygon has no chance of ever beating Swampert anyway, so... Yeah, maybe Sauce wanted to show pity at best, maybe the Stealth Rock spam was just to show me it didn't matter what I did in the end game that I would lose regardless, but it's 2016, I mean, come on. I guess we'll really never be above this stuff. But anyway, going back to turn 23, 99% is a really weird damage roll in this situation. There's no bulky standard Jirachi set that Adamant Choice Scar Flygon can do that much damage to. Flygon's Earthquake, in fact, tops out at 92% versus Substitute Thunder Wave Jirachi, which is the least bulky set. So I could argue that I got a low damage roll, which really sucks if that was the case. But anyway, I hope you guys still enjoyed. If you guys like what you saw, hit that like button just below the video. If you didn't like it, then hit the dislike button, but let me know in the comments as to why. If you don't want to miss the future stuff coming down the pipe, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Links to all the social clubs I hang out at are in the description box below. Twitter, Google+, Twitch, all that good stuff. Anyway, stay tuned for more, and until then, Molly's out. Take care, guys. Peace.